Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. My God, you're so much bigger than this. This can't be. You are so much bigger than this. This can't be. You are so much. You are so much bigger than this. This can't be. It. You are so much. You are so much bigger than this. This can't be. It. Hallelujah. Listen. Abraham had about 312 people and he thought that was all about his destiny. Little did he know that the call that was upon him was a generational call. That he would represent the portrait of a blessed man. When God called him out of where he was, he thought that there can be nothing higher. Let me tell you something. The greatest enemy of success is the last one you had. Because it can create complacency and make you feel that all to the circumference of your destiny is that. The Bible says the sons of the prophet were with Elisha. And one day they told him, they say, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. I tell you, the choir got it on the spot in the spirit. We are still going to pray for five minutes. I just feel we need to let this rest. Because there are many things speaking to some of you. It's like there is a limit that life and culture has created over you. But tonight you need to challenge everything. The Bible says, listen, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It says they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yetzah, every imagination that attempts to exalt itself. Your past failures notwithstanding. This can be it. Come on, prophesy. Let the devil hear you speak. Let angels hear you speak. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. The Bible says there is hope for a tree. Though it be cut down. It said at the scent of water. Maka potoke rakata baziketa lakaya. Lord, this can't be it. Challenge yourself. Throw away complacency. Tell yourself, this is not what I saw in my vision. No. He showed me nations, not a city. He showed me greatness, not mediocrity. And all the families of the earth, not the city of Zaria, all the families of the earth shall call you blessed. You shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, until you get to the utmost part of the earth. Yes, Lord. Calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. That's the secret in the spirit. You first will go deeper, deeper, deeper. 
then you can go higher 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 the bible says listen it says the remnant of the house of jacob they shall bear root downwards and then they will bear fruit upwards there is no upward movement until your root is solid grounded established in truth this is what we seek to do every time we gather if you don't have a seat stand if you cannot sit find the ground do not allow anything limit you there is a curriculum of the spirit and faithfully see that will endure to the end because the bible says to that one they will be given a crown and a white stone no man who worried will entangle himself with the things of civilians hallelujah praise the lord god bless you worship team listen there is an end to every spiritual pursuit this is not a vain this is not a vain seeking of something that is ambiguous we are not confused about what we are pressing into are you listening to me we are not confused week after week the bible says he that soweth unto the spirit shall of the spirit reap life eternal but he that soweth unto the flesh he will reap corruption we are not just chasing after shadows no no there is a definiteness guaranteed by the integrity of the word that we will arrive there are you listening to me so every time you have the opportunity to show up in his presence realize that this is your demonstration of your willingness to proceed in this spiritual journey for there is an end to all things let me tell you something the bible says if the cloud be full of rain if the cloud be full there is an incense of sacrifice that is being raised week after week you may look like a fool doing it but there is the god who sits and the bible says righteousness and justice ah god cannot be mocked do not be deceived whatsoever any man sows that will he reap there is a seed you are sowing and there is a god who sits upon a throne backed up by justice he will see to it according to jeremiah 1 12. the bible says he's alert and active watching over his word to bring it to pass so your success in life does not become a mistake it is men who do not understand the part of the spirit that criticize great men because they do not know that it is on, upon the bowels of much traveling and alignment in the spirit that you command power in the heavens it's not a gift it's a reward take over take over we have come to the end of ourselves take over take over we have come to the end of our hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end of us hallelujah hallelujah we have come to the end just the voices take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over take over we have come to the end of myself hallelujah Hallelujah, we have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I made a vow with my life and with destiny 
that I will not stop until my destiny looks like the visions that the Lord has shown me. This is why I don't get distracted with the frivolities of men. The journey is still far. Regardless of what it is that men say, I don't have time to waste my time. There is an urgency upon my spirit. Many of us just take one or two steps and then you stop there. Uh -uh. You must contend in the spirit. Every time God wants to challenge me, he, he, he reintroduces to me the visions of the Lord that he showed me. And it puts a fire upon my bones. When you come to the end of yourself, then you are ready to begin a journey with him. This is not a special number. The songs that we sing are deep songs of the spirit. They are an attempt to be able to articulate and communicate certain things. We have come to the end of us. Hallelujah. Listen. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. You won't go to hell. You can choose to remain at the level that you are. When it comes to the walk with God, the experiential work with the Holy Spirit in the kingdom. Listen. No man cajoles you. It's sad that the body of Christ is full of pranks and tricks and cajoling. Great men are not made that way. For the birth of anything valuable is painful. It is as soon as Zion travails that she puts forth a son. Many of us are used to all kinds of pampering. No, no, no. When it comes to the realm of greatness, you must gain structure and dexterity in the spirit. It will cost you your time. It will cost you sacrifice. You will make decisions that are uncommon. But at the end of that, there will be a crown. Hallelujah. There must first be a desire in your heart to leave the realm where you are. I don't compare the standard I want to become with many people in our generation because it's an apology. When I read about the fathers of old, I, I, I am challenged. What did these ancient people see? What realm did they touch that made them like immortals upon the earth? Hebrews begins to leave them. It says through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They shut the mouths of lions. There is a realm that is deficient in the body of Christ. We have lost touch with reality in the spirit. There is a call for us to return and contend for the things that are genuine, lasting and potent. Where the Holy Spirit does not become a strange personality. This is why we call this koinonia. This is a place where we expose you to the reality of a personality, not a phenomenon. A personality that is able to help you and make your life become a wonder. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Always our cry. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Call His name, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost. Take your place, take your place, take your place, take your place. Just the voices one more time. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, 
You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. When this become the anthem of your life, the things that men die chasing after will be given unto you at a platter of gold. It will be the reward of your consistency with the Spirit. Hallelujah. If your heart is determined to pursue Him, to seek Him, you will get power. You will get fame, increase, influence. He said one thing is needful you are running around chasing after many things one thing is needful one thing is needful this is the first message to many of us tonight hallelujah many people are looking for the secret of many things success power anointing grace increase but let me tell you something. In my little journey, I have found out that the Holy Spirit is called the fountain of life. He is the universal set consisting of everything that you will want. I didn't start my journey with any hidden agenda. I've said it again and again. I was not looking for anointing. I was not looking for power. I was not looking for crowd. I was not looking for recognition. My heart was panting after the reality of the kingdom experience. Because I was dissatisfied with the status quo. And the things that men have camped around. Something in my spirit told me this was not it. And as I began to contend. And get deeper into this journey that I did not know. The mission was follow me. God did not give me any assurance on the way. Hmm. God did not promise me a crowd. God did not promise me I'll be wearing suit one day. But he promised me his presence. And he kept that promise. I'm not obliged to accuse God for anything. Because he kept what he said he will give me. His presence. His glorious presence when you have that presence you command every other thing i mean it you will literally command every other thing this is the master key the glorious presence of god it should not just be a church thing it must become a reality and the lord walking with them and as a result, confirming the word, not their word, the word with signs following. And the Lord. Moses said, do not let us. We have no ministry outside his presence. Do not let us depart. Oh, but if he will go with me, I will go anywhere. And there is one guarantee. Exploit unlimited. Satan notwithstanding. Because of his divine presence. He's the Holy Ghost. Don't join me. You're the Holy Ghost. I call you the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Breathe on us tonight. Breathe on us. You are the Holy Ghost, the presence of the living God. You are the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. Change our lives now. Change our lives now. Have your way. Have your way. 
just pray one prayer and say Lord I surrender all to you from the depths of your heart I surrender all worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb faithful 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 is the lamb Faithful, faithful is the Spirit of the living God. We are gathered tonight in this place. It will never become a traditional display of religion. Nor will it be the vain quest of men to seek relevance. But it will remain the tabernacle of glory. Where you are building and raising and training great people. We dissociate ourselves from the frivolities and the vain quest to seek significance after or outside your presence for in thee is the fountain of life and in thy light do we see i praise you and bless you tonight we sit at the feet of the great rabbi teach us the mysteries of the kingdom that will prepare us let us eat the bread of the spirit for the journey is far strengthen us O god that we will bear root and be stable in our Christian experience. Hallelujah. I welcome everyone tonight. Please hug three or four people. Tell them God bless you and be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for coming, everyone. Hallelujah. It's always a privilege. I apologize for all the people who are having to stand. I assure you, this is not a waste. Not when you are doing it for His Majesty. May the Lord cause the nations to stand before you. Because they will stand in awe. Hallelujah. I'd rather stand before God than to stand begging and clamoring for the attention of men. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to tell you something. It is always a privilege, always a privilege to bring the word of the Lord to us. I have never considered it as a right. I didn't earn it. This is an election of grace. Before I was born, God has been blessing and raising people. And if He tarries after we are gone, there will still be the impact of the Spirit. Look, sit down anywhere you find. If you can sit on stage and you won't feel embarrassed, go ahead. We're excellent people and we're organized but not too organized to rob people of entering their glorious destiny. Hallelujah. There is a longing that only you can feel A raging tempest that only you can steal my heart is thirsty, Lord, 
to know you as I'm known. Drink from the river that flows before your throne. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Would you take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before? I just want to love you more and more. How I long. That's my desire. That's my desire all the time. My desire is not to be a great preacher. I'm telling you. Being a great preacher does not heal the sick. It doesn't cast out devils. It doesn't change destinies. I desire to know Him. I desire to know Him with all my heart. There is an urgency in my spirit that is not bound to this realm nor anything this realm can offer. It is my singular pursuit. As far as I'm concerned, I have not begun ministry yet. This is only the preparation for an extraordinary life. I want to challenge you even as we start. Your desire for God must be genuine. Otherwise, you will be tired later on. Hallelujah. It's good to receive from God. It's good to receive. That's why we have miracle services. Where we trust the Spirit of God to release great things into the lives of men. But let me tell you, if your circumference of your pursuit for God is centered around the things you will get, your Christian experience will be poor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Tonight we'll be considering something. Please bring out your notebooks, whatever you have to write. I want to teach tonight on the walking knowledge of the word. The walking knowledge of the word. It's the Greek word epignosis. The working knowledge of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John 8. How many of you believe God is here? Those of us who are pastors and men of God or will be called into ministry, listen, let me give you a frank advice. If you have the best stage in the world and you have the best of media people, you wear the best of suits and you lack the presence of God, you are wasting God's time and the time of His people. Hallelujah. All of those things are only relevant if you can sustain the presence of God. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, May His praise be found in you. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom, 
Shalom, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Lord, we will give you no rest until we become the Zion of our Lord experientially. Thank you, Jesus. John 8. I'd rather not have a ministry and have his presence. I rather be considered a failure and have his presence. When you have his presence, you have everything. Learn this. When you have his presence, you will have every other thing. I cannot burn this enough into your spirit. Everybody listen. When you have his presence, you have everything. The presence of God is the end of every argument. The end of every contention. Let your presence never depart from this house, O God. Let it please you, Majesty, to make this place a tabernacle of your presence. You called it Koinonia. This is a place where we meet. Let this be the gates of heaven. Let nothing in this place turn into religion. Let it not be the simple quest of men to make meaning out of their lives. Lord, that you will find a place that you can tabernacle and build men and train men holy spirit you will find full expression in the midst of your people your presence we covet greater weights of your presence greater than any revelation hmm. greater than any anointing the presence of the living god presence of the living God. Lord, we honestly desire you. This is a true commitment from our hearts. On behalf of your people, Lord, we express a desperation. We want to see all of you manifest in our lives. We know that there is an extraordinary life destined for us in Christ. And we labor in the spirit to apprehend that which has been kept aforetime for us. So help us, O oh God, tonight as we advance in this sincere quest. It's a preparation for a fire and a revival that the earth has not seen. You brought everyone here by your predeterminate counsel. Teach us, great rabbi. We sit before your holy presence, break the bread of the Spirit and cause understanding to be crystallized upon us. May we not be men void of spiritual understanding. Strengthen our hearts out of the abundance of the deposit of spiritual things that you will put in us. Give us grace to be able to read the writings on the wall. That we may stand among the great and command power in this realm. We thank you because it is your great desire to do this. We yield ourselves to you, O oh Great One. Breathe upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 8. Verse 32. The working knowledge of the word. This is what I want to teach on tonight. Hallelujah. 
And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know, not that is available, the truth that you have, that you know, will make you free. The word know the truth there is the Greek word epigenosko. Is the complete and accurate knowledge of anything that brings the person who is knowing and what is known into oneness. Hallelujah. And you shall know there will be an intercourse between you and the truth. And as a result, you will experience liberty. You will experience freedom. The limitations that and the encumbrances of life that keep you at the lower echelons of life will give room and you will celebrate freedom. It says you shall know the truth. Not that you will hear about the truth. You will know. It's one thing to hear. It's another thing to know. Hallelujah. This realm is governed by knowledge. Write it. This realm is governed by knowledge. The degree of light that you have. Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, Arise. Comma. Shine. It says, For your light is come. Arise. Shine. Not because you want to arise. Not because you... This is not an issue of desire here. It is the byproduct of the coming of your light. Arise. Shine. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the prophecy verse 2. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth. And deep Gross darkness. Darkness symbolizes confusion, ignorance. Gross darkness upon the people. It says, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 as a result. It says, the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles, unbelievers, will be compelled by your light, the knowledge that you have. And even kings will come to the brightness of your rising. This realm, listen, listen, please. This realm is governed by knowledge. This realm is not governed by miracles. It's not governed by guesswork. As good as miracles are, the earth is not governed by miracles. A miracle is only necessary because there is a violation of a principle. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet began to lament. Speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed. Because of lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. Listen. It says because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being a priest. That means it takes knowledge. Everybody say light. Everybody say light. Knowledge. This realm is governed by knowledge. That means the limitation that you have in life is the limitation of knowledge. For you will only arise to the degree to which your light comes. I'm convinced that where I am in life and the limitations in my life are the limitations of light. And so the remedy is to contend. The Bible says he made many lights. 
all of those many lights have their dimensions but he made two great lights two great lights and at the emergence of those lights they silenced all those little lights he says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night i've said it and i've said it again and again that if that light comes you will rule both in the day and in the night hallelujah so where you are today seated looking at me is where your realm of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things have kept you i am convinced that no enemy and no devil can keep a man when his knowledge has lifted him higher there are two ways to bind satan one is by prayer the other is by knowledge Your knowledge can make you live as if Satan does not exist. They know not, the Bible says, neither do they understand. They will grow up in darkness. And so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Psalm 82. hallelujah are you listening to me are you there okay psalm 82 can you give us psalm 82 let's just look at it from the amplified it's possible everybody say after me i go for knowledge i refuse to remain where i am i go for knowledge if you will believe this this is a very powerful revelation that where you are today is because of the limitation of your knowledge from verse 4 deliver the poor and the needy rescue them out of the hands of the wicked verse 5 the magistrates and judges know not this is talking about you you will understand that from the context of verse 1 it says neither will they understand and as a result they walk on it in darkness. What is the darkness there? Of complacent satisfaction. As a result, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Verse 6. This is God speaking to the great. He says, I have said ye are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. indeed all of you are children of the most high the last verse but you shall die as mere men and fall as one of these princes everybody say knowledge accurate knowledge working knowledge not theoretical knowledge epignosis talks of the working knowledge knowledge that can be applicable to bring you results many of us have all kinds of religious junks and theory that cannot stand the test of time so many listen we we live in a generation of rema and knowledge there are people who can quote genesis 1 to revelation 22. we have a lot of theoretical knowledge about different aspects of the christian faith but none of this knowledge is potent enough to deliver to us the reality of what the word says will be he says ye search the scripture for in them ye think you will find life and you will not come to me he said the letter killeth but the spirit quickeneth that should be psalms i mean john 6 63 i think john 6 63 The words that I speak unto you. It says, it is the spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatsoever. The words, the truths. That's why the Bible says, ye shall know the word. Ye shall know the truth. 
I have been speaking to you as spirit and life. Everybody say, I contend for knowledge. The walking knowledge of the truth. I began to edit my life some years ago and I found out that I had many useless though spiritual knowledge. Useless though spiritual. Because I used it in the face of danger and it was helpless. So I knew that this was nonsense. If it is the word of God, it should carry in it the life of God to deliver results. Is that correct? And so I began, I made a resolution that I was not going to waste my time junking myself with religious knowledge that is not able to produce results in my life. There are people who have heaps of books in their houses. They've read everything. But knowledge that is vain. Let me show you something very powerful. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, that should be chapter 12, from verse 10. Are you getting blessed? Please take seriously what I'm sharing. I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that everyone will receive. Ecclesiastes 12. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. That which was written was upright and verse 11. He says, the words of the wise are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12. Listen. He says, and further, by this my son be admonished of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the flesh. Now this is not saying you should not study. You understand the context? Junking yourself with all kinds of knowledge that only makes you feel that you are making progress, but you are not making any progress. Hallelujah. There is weariness to the flesh. 13, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You can stop there. Could it be that the knowledge you have been having is only puffing you up but it's not delivering results that means there is need to convert your theoretical spiritual knowledge into the walking knowledge the walking knowledge i learned this from bishop david oyedeko remains my lifelong mentor in the area of wisdom a man who has contacted the spirit of wisdom knowledge that can be applied if you study glass technology and this glass is broken and you carry it and throw it away of what good is your knowledge are you listening to me walking knowledge practical applicable knowledge there are many people who know almost all the scriptures and demons come and oppress them and they are helpless it means your knowledge is not applicable it's not working hallelujah are you receiving something and i want to challenge you tonight and expose you to the principles that can help your knowledge become experiential you can know that what you know can work for you listen can i tell you something there is a waiting process in faith but the waiting time is not forever the end of faith is a performance this is what validates the waiting time thank you jesus the first thing i want to talk about is the supremacy of god's word everybody write the supremacy of god's word the supremacy of God's word. God's word in this realm is the final authority over the affairs of men. God's word is the final authority. Final authority when it comes to the affairs of men. Your experiences notwithstanding. Your experiences do not have the capacity to validate the word of God. The word of God is that standard, is that benchmark 
that all other things revolve around. That means when your Christian experience is not tilting you towards the reality of the word of God, you can check and know that something is wrong with your life. There are many ministries that build their churches and their ministries around spiritual experiences. Never build your Christian life just around visions and dreams. You will get into a lot of demonic error. That's the problem with a lot of people. They are always seeing something every day and they never consult the word. And so it leads them into blind error. They are like a pendulum swinging from left to right. Can I tell you something? Those who will last in these days are men who give priority to the word of God. Not men who have visions and dreams. I believe in spiritual experiences. But the realm of the spirit is such a complex realm. You must only look at it from the realm of God's word to pick out that which is relevant to your destiny. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are seeing visions and someone is an ardent student of the word, that student feels very inferior. He feels me, I'm not seeing anything. And we brag about the things that we see and hear in the spirit. Do you not know that your experiences have not been tested, but the word of God has been tested seven times through every dispensation and it has been found to last. If you build your church upon the word of God, I don't care what men say, it will stand. If you build it upon visions and prophecies, get set, they will fall. If you build your miracle, there are many men of God who build their miracles around anointing. As good as that is, I feel very sorry for them. The word of God. The spirit and life of God. God is only commanded to go anywhere his word attracts him to. hallelujah are you learning something the supremacy when you come to a point where you realize that the word of god is the final authority everybody say final authority concerning any area if it's your finance the word of god is the final authority if it's your well-being the word of god is final authority so if I tell you, you will not die. And you say, ah, the man of God has spoken to me that I will not die. That is wonderful. But can I tell you something? There is a more sure word of prophecy that you find out in God's word. That I shall not die but live to declare. Any other prophetic word that comes only comes as a confirmation. Listen, my life is grounded upon solid I thank God that I did not start my spiritual journey on visions and dreams. I started it upon the solid foundation of seeking the word. Hallelujah. There are many people who will not believe the word of God until a man of God stands and prophesies and speaks it to them. There are many people who cannot take the word of God and believe. And say, look, this word guarantees certain things. Thank God for the gifts in the body. But do you know that the word of God is greater and bigger than any man of God? And that at the revelation of the true revelation of this word, you can open up any closed door. Koinonia is not running on guesswork. That's why we don't give ourselves heart attack for once. We are running upon the infallible, irrefutable, working, practical knowledge of God's word. Did you hear what I said? We are not walking upon just a blind prophecy. Practical. Irrefutable. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abided forever. What is your life built upon right now? There are many of you, our lives are built upon shadows. The day the man of God who has become the anchor to your life is not around, you are dead. Our churches are full of gullible people who are just running. Oh, prophet, just tell me something. Just touch me. Just touch me. And they don't know why. Now, I believe in these vessels. You will get something because they are anointed. But did you know that you are only established to the degree to which you have the working knowledge of God? If someone looks at me today 
and says that witches had a meeting that I would die. I'm not even going to pray about it. I tell you, I have too many important things. My 24 hours has been well sectioned. There is no space for frivolities. Hallelujah. This is why you find out that there are ministries that have a lot of crowd but no growth. No spiritual growth. Gullible beggars looking for men of God chasing after people everywhere that should be built and established in truth. It's God's desire. Shame on us if all we have in this place is a crowd of people sitting everywhere with little or no spiritual knowledge. This is why we dedicate only one Friday in the whole month. We sit under the word of God and feed you with truth that will build you so that you will now begin to command results and bring blessings to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is very powerful. There are all kinds of books that have been written about church growth, church planting, church principles, advancement. I've read some of those books and I'm sorry to tell you they are just junks. Those who wrote them do not even have a working knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shall thou make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Everybody say the supremacy of God's word. The word of God reigns supreme over your life. Anybody that is leading you into any spiritual dimension outside God's word is a herbalist. Run! Don't pray! That's why before we begin ministering to you, we make sure that we show you the scriptural foundation upon which we do everything. And this is why he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Very important! You must have a working, practical, experiential knowledge of God's truth. If I ask you today, why will you be successful in life? What will be your answer? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you. But if I ask you, if someone asks you right now, say, sister, can you stand up? Don't worry, I won't ask you. Stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. If I ask this lovely lady now, and I say, why are you, are you going to be successful in life? That's the only one I will ask. She said, definitely. But listen, did you know that success is not the issue of willpower? Forget about willpower has never brought anybody success it's not even a function of resolution when i see your investment in the word of god i can predict your future hallelujah i don't care what confessions you are making if i do not see you contending for the truth of God's word. I know you are wasting your time and the time of others. Hallelujah. Say after me, the word of God reigns supreme. Yes. It must reign supreme. That means the following, number one. Your life must be compelled to live by the principles of the word. Your life must be compelled. Notice I use the word compel. It says mortify your body. This body is stubborn. Your life must be compelled to come under the governing influence of the word. A believer is not just one who talks church things. A believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the word. That the word of God becomes your basis of judgment and decision. Are you listening to me? Is someone learning something? So listen to me. Hold on. Now I want to open a shop. Hallelujah. The first thing is not to run and look for capital. The first thing is to run to the word of God. 
and find out what is the economic program that the word of God has earmarked for the success of the believer. If you are not doing that, I feel sorry for whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. You want to get married. The first thing is not to say, Kai, Pastor Jakes, I saw this beautiful girl. Mm -mm, leave that girl alone. Run to the word. The walking knowledge. Hallelujah. And then you begin to study. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a bad thing. And so you say, wow, there are many ways to get good things in life. One of it is marriage. That becomes your basis of joy. And then you now check. One can conquer a thousand. Two can conquer ten thousand. That means you expect acceleration and increase in your life. Listen, many people do not allow the word of God, the applicable knowledge. We have knowledge that we cannot use. We cannot try. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He didn't say thy word is a book in my hands. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. That's guidance. And a light to my path. That's direction. The moment there is anything in life, the first thing, the first place to run to is the word. Search it out. Stay with the word until light breaks forth. People fast. They have no revelation of what they are doing. So it becomes a meaningless spiritual exercise. People do night vigils. They only do it because they are emulating those who have been successful. That's the reason why something can be blessing somebody else and be killing another person. The same thing. Lack of light. Hallelujah. I never do anything in my life because people are doing it. Never. People can be running. I'll just sit down and be looking at them. They say, won't you join? I say, me? Go where? Who is going to shorty my running? Who is going to take responsibility for when God does not send you, he doesn't back you. I never do anything. That's why you notice that we don't do anything in this place except God directs us. And when God directs us, we are committed to it. Doggedly. What has been governing your life? What has been governing your life? For many of us, we do not have time for the word. We have time to discuss our problems with everybody. We have time to run around chewing from morning till night in the homes of prophets. And apostles and teachers and every kind of person. But we do not have time for the word. You just spend five minutes inspiring women or rhapsody of realities or every day with Jesus. Thank God for these resources. But you give your academics only that time and see if you will excel. What makes you believe? The clearest proof of love is the investment of time. Whatever you love, you will have time for it. That you do not love the word of God and spend time is a sign that is not a priority for you. Hallelujah. How amiable are your words, O Lord. They are my meditation day and night. You know, many of us do not understand the dynamics of how the written word will translate into making, improving the quality of your life. Predominantly because we have not been taught. Hallelujah. I spend a major portion of my life and time building upon the word. Because the word will give me what people are chasing after. The light breaks from the word. I sit under the word. Scrolling from page to page. Searching for spiritual principles and mysteries. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Has the word of God become ultimate and final authority over your life? This is the question God is asking us. 
Many of us live as if we are not Christians. You live as if you are children of the devil. But when we come to church, we behave. Our decisions come from Nigerian films and advices from friends. The word of God is always the last resort for many people. When they've tried every other junk and it does not work. You meet somebody who is going through a predicament in his life and recommend scriptures and give the person, they'll go and throw it away. But tell the person, wake up by 12. Stand at the right side of your house. Wear only boxers. Look at the sky for 10 minutes. And say, I am free. I am free. I am free. They'll say, I like it. This is the kind of thing I like. Because we have not been taught the power of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. He says, and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Oh, that you will understand the glory. You will understand how organized your life will be. If you will give time to the word of God. Do you know how Satan makes us to run away from God's word? Distraction, distraction, distraction. Many of us are too busy and it's not God that gave you what is occupying you. It is your vain quest for ambition. I'm sorry for anybody who wants to ever be successful in life and will not first sit down with the word of God. The word of God will ease your journey in life. The word of God will guarantee your arrival in a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The word of God. See, when the word of God becomes the basis of anything you do, your results are predictable. Koinonia will never be less than it is now. You know why? There is the working word that is granting us grace. Hallelujah. The supremacy. God is asking you a question tonight. You know, whenever I am saying these kinds of things, ladies think I'm taking them personal, but I, I need to hit you people very well because you are, you are the victims. Some of you are looking at me the way you are looking at me. This word is just jumping and passing. There are all kinds of soils. Why don't you settle with the word? One thing, matter, matter, you are concerned and upset about many things. Many of us believe that when you are connected to so, so, so and so person, you will be prosperous. Let me tell you ahead of time, you are wasting your time because the greatest of any man is a man. Are you listening to me? Some of us are depending on the blessings of our... Some of us are depending on our degrees. Some of us are depending on any... Let me tell you, anything you are depending on that is not the word of God has already predicted your life. Doom. But happy are you when you find it. Happy are you when you find it. Right from the time... When there was nobody who would come around, the word of God already showed us a picture. Listen. Am I boring you? Are you receiving something? I'm challenging you because, see, the cruelty of life can only be immune. You can only be immune to it by the revelation of the word of God that you have. Manda prato salako zipataya. There is a whiplash of poverty coming upon people in ways in, in unprecedented dimensions that will turn Christians into beggars. But to you, to you who are within, who will take the word of God serious, you will find out that you are rising. Are you listening to me? I am convinced that no man can take my life. This is no longer a prayer point. It has become my conviction. And there are, there, there are a network of scriptures that have informed this ideology. 
It's not just because, do you know how many text messages people have sent to me? I saw you dying. I saw them shooting you. I say, let it remain from the realm of the dream, dear. Because it will never happen. You do not know how immune I am. He said, I will slay a nation for your sake. A nation. Not three arm robbers or four. A nation. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. This becomes the basis of our authority and audacity in the spirit. I will never become a failure in life. No, see, this is not, I'm not confessing it to make me believe. I'm speaking forth out of the abundance of that which has been settled in my heart. You know why? It's not because Jesus is alive alone. I found the keys. Hiya. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys, brothers and sisters. If you catch it, you have caught it. The Lord is granting you keys. If you have caught it, you have caught it. I will never, till Jesus comes, taste poverty again. Forever. No, see, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bragging. No, I have found it. I have found it. He said, I have found. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. He says, look unto Abraham, your father. And to Sarah that bear thee, I called him alone and blessed him. Called him alone. So I decided to understudy the life of Abraham. Because the Bible tells me he's the biblical portrait of a blessed man. And the Bible says, and Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent. And he blessed Abraham. And he said, blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. I found in the book of Malachi, he said, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? The walking knowledge. I will never rob God of my time. Listen. God gives you 100%. And he says, give me 10% to prove that what the blessing I sent arrived to you. So that I can send another one. He said, bring ye all your tithes to my house. And prove me now, here with saith the Lord, if I will not, number one, open the windows of heaven. Number two, shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Number three, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said, you shall be called blessed and you shall be a delightsome land. Luke 6, Verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, for with the same measure you give, that is the measure you'll be given. I found it. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. The Bible begins to speak about God loving a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And then I found in scripture, Haya, he said the gift of a man, the gift of a man makes room. The gift of a man. And I have the greatest gift in me, the Holy Ghost. That means forever, there will always be room for me. When you build your life around the confidence of the word of God, you become unbeatable. Hallelujah. Koinonia will always remain blessed. Because I found in Hebrews 7.7, 7, it says, And without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. And without contradiction, I found there the secret Hallelujah. These are the principles that we are working with. 
people will keep coming for koinonia in ways that defy explanation you know why the bible says if i be lifted up so that's the key if i be lifted up not a man of god he say i i paul can plant apollo can water but increase is not given to any man hmm. hallelujah i found the secret of the anointing this is not guesswork uh -uh. the secret of the anointing is not just impartation psalms 89 i have found my servant david when it comes to the things of the anointing you must be a servant this is the secret of revelation and power revelation chapter 1 verse 1 it says the revelation of jesus christ which he sent unto his servant john that he should show unto his servants the things that must happen joshua chapter one the lord speaking to joshua said moses my servant is dead he said and as i was with moses so i will be with you what is your life standing upon what is your life standing upon hallelujah what is your life standing upon luke 10 19 forever settles the issue of the devil he says behold i give you power to tread upon snakes scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing that's why i cast out devils and sleep like a baby the devil that would distract me has not yet been manufactured in hell. I remember saying this years ago and somebody told me, you are making too much noise, so let the person see now. What is the framework of your confidence in the spirit? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Bible says, I fear no evil. Why? For thou. You see why we talk about the presence of God? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me, not in the absence, but in the presence of my enemies. They need to be witnesses. You anoint my head with oil, and that anointing causes my cup to overflow. Hallelujah. I found the secret of commanding increase in any land. The Bible says, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let the people praise thee. And then the earth shall yield her increase. See, you are limited by your knowledge. Listen to me. You are limited. You are limited by your knowledge. If you will contend, many of us need to sit with the word of God and cry. We have a praying generation, which is great. But we have a wordless generation too. We have men and women who can pray for 12 hours, but they cannot sit with the word for 3 hours. And we have been made to believe that the moment you can pray and attack spiritual forces, they will go. You try it. This is why the prayer life of many people has no fire and it has no power. Because their prayer is, is not consistent with the word of God. Jesus spent 3 years doing a teaching ministry with his disciples after that he released them and they shook their world they sat under his feet for three solid years day and night i write these things to you oh excellent theophilus all that jesus began to do and teach all that jesus began to do Your success can be predictable it can be consistent it can be stable hallelujah i listed all the areas in my life that i know will be relevant for my human existence and I started supporting them with solid scriptures. There's no area of my life that I've left to chance. Hallelujah. 
Do you have a working knowledge of the truth? Have you found truth that you are running with? What are you running with? Many of us are running with luck and guesswork. How are you going to know that that is the job? Based on salary? Based on what? See, the life of many believers is, is too unpre is too is too slippery. We are not solid in our work. This is why we dwindle at anything. Whatever is happening, everybody is running. Something else is happening, everybody is running. When will you gain stability in the spirit? Hallelujah. We have a prosperous ministry forever. Because the Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. These are the conditions. So, fruitfulness and productivity is not just dash. There are conditions. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on that law doth he meditate day and night. What is the result? He shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. And then he says, whatsoever he doeth, prosper. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Everybody say the word is final authority over my life. See, some of you want increase, you want joy, you want grace, but you are obviously working against your own success. Because you are walking against the world. Many of you are, you want prosperity, but you are so greedy. There are some battles Satan cannot fight. The only way Satan can fight your harvest is to fight your seed time. I see a lot of people who want to be rich. You get angry when you see rich people. You get angry when you see blessed people. As though they are being blessed, stopped you. From achieving your own. When you see a blessed man who is blessed by kingdom principles, look at his giving life. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, or cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflowing. Many of you are greedy and selfish and self-centered. That's why you will never get the blessings of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many miracle services you attend. Don't be offended. I'm teaching you the principle that will help you. Hallelujah. Do not envy a giver. He cannot help his situation. He will remain blessed. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. By the grace of God. As soon as the offerings are collected, before anything is done with the money, I'm sharing these principles with you because I want it to work in your life. 10% of it is taken on to God. We can't stop being blessed. It doesn't matter what your personal feeling is about it. Hallelujah. You can be anointed and keep growing in the anointing. Are you listening to me? There are many people who can be anointed and full of fire. And then one day you find out that they are no longer anointed. No. That's anointing that came as a result of impartation. Without knowledge to back it. 
I can lay hands on you and you begin to do supernatural things. But your lack of knowledge will mislead you. So it must be supported by knowledge. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Say I contend for knowledge. I don't see limits in my life. This is not because I read a motivational book. I found out in God's word that if thou canst believe, all things are possible, not to a Christian, to him that believeth. If thou canst believe, that's the only barrier. If thou canst believe. The Bible says, when they shall say there is a casting down, for us our story is different. We will say there is a lifting up. I believe this. I believe this. Hallelujah. Psalms 128 says, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It says, His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And all of that, he begins to speak. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The fear of the Lord. That means the fear of the Lord has a lot of blessings. If you do not fear the Lord, why will you want his blessings? See, this is what people like David Oyedeko and other people call the covenant. They call it the covenant because once you play your part, God is committed to his part. Hallelujah. I found in life that when you solve people's problems, you become blessed forever. This is the secret of generational impact and influence. Many people think money makes a ministry. Impact brings blessings. When you bless people, they are too grateful to leave you the way they met you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the fire upon the altar shall not go down that's why i will not stop praying that's why i won't stop fasting and then shall thy light break as the morning access to unlimited insight and illumination of the spirit now that you know these things do you live by it do you practice it can i tell you something Many of you have, have been accusing God. But sit down this night and you will know God is fair. You are the one who has been killing yourself. Is that true? Many of you know that. No, look, God is just. He told Cain, he said, if you do like your brother, will he not be accepted? That's what he told Cain. Cain was angry that his brother's sacrifice was accepted. I was watching Dunamis TV. And I saw Paul and wife. He was not around. And she was ministering in their healing and deliverance service. And I just sat down. I said, no, God, you are just. There is no partiality in you at all. If I do what that man is getting, I will get his result. Full stop. Period. Rather than criticizing people, especially for those of you who, in your small campus fellowship or this and that, you are already used to talk. Why don't you find out what they are doing? This, you see, let me tell you something. I say this with all humility. Don't misunderstand me. We have this ugly pride in the body of Christ. Huh? That we are all equal. Now, I believe we are equal. Listen, we are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in knowledge. We are not equal in grace. There are some people that have been given authority by reason of certain things. Doing business with the spirit in deep waters. The church of God has this ugly, arrogant way. When I see a man that carries something I don't have, I sit down. I don't come to him and say we are colleagues. Uh -uh. I sit down. When I'm listening to Oyedeko or any of this man of God, if you come, if you distract me, I will, I will drive you away. Because I'm receiving. 
Aleluya. I wanted to know the secret of wealth because I knew it was going to be necessary because of the kind of life and ministry God is giving. And I didn't want to live this false life of begging people from left, right and center. I found out from scripture that God sent me to be a blessing to you, not a burden. I can't yoke you with my responsibilities. It's good to go and meet the one who called me. And so I went and met God. Do you know what? God told me he's not going to teach me anything. I should find vessels. That's where I found that scripture. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. In other words, God said, there are people who are commanding results in this area. Search for them. Be humble enough to sit under their feet and learn. And I said, fine. Got their materials, got their books. Sat down with an open heart and light broke from my spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. I remember one time I was, I was praying and I, I, I slept off and I had a dream. In the dream, Bishop Oedeko was sitting down and I came. And from my wallet, I took some money and I was dropping at his feet. When I took that money and I was dropping at his feet, he looked at me. He said, there's still some in the wallet. I should bring out everything. I brought out everything and I dropped it. And then he brought out a carton just out of a drawer. It was full of all kinds of currencies, mint. And he looked at me and the Holy Ghost spoke to me expressly. He said, the keys of prosperity that I gave Bishop Oyedeko, I have given it unto you. My life is a product of encounters that are a derivative of the word. Follow them. This is what I found in the word. Who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. So what do you need? Knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge. Knowledge. Could it be that that's what you need to live where you are to the next level? He told the woman, 2 Kings 4, he said, what do you have in your house? Listen to what she said. She said, a little. This was her, this was her problem. It was not the oil. The cruise holding the oil was little, so it could not do much for her. And the prophet told her what her solution is. He said, if you increase capacity, the oil will increase. Hmm. Knowledge. Where I am today. Oh, if you see the way I cry before God. What you see today is our mindset of yesterday. Wait and see what God is doing with us today. I tell you, there is, there is, there is, an, there is a wave that is coming in this of the infallible word of God I can stake my life at this word unto death fathers have gone before us they took this same scripture who through faith subdued nations they shut the mouths of lions people did great things a man of God went to Lagos the first time he went to Lagos he slept under the bridge but right now, the world is celebrating that man. He's called Archbishop Sam Amaga. This word turned ordinary. Listen, listen to me. This word took ordinary people. Show me what you are doing with this word and let me tell you what your future will be. I don't need to be a prophet. Just show me. Let me see the value you are placing on this word. I can tell you what your tomorrow will be like. I respect the word. I don't just believe it. I submit to the governing authority of the word. I love the word. I love the word. Hear me tonight. I'm giving you a big key. Epignosis. I will find out the working knowledge concerning my finances. The working knowledge concerning success in ministry. The working knowledge concerning intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The working knowledge concerning miracles, signs and wonders. The working knowledge concerning church growth. The working knowledge concerning generational impact. The working knowledge concerning leadership. I found my way out of every nonsense in life. It's only a matter of time. I found my way. I found my way. 
not when the word of god is here for me not when the holy ghost i found my way i'm telling you every factor notwithstanding this is how you can rejoice in the lord he said rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice say after me i'm blessed let me tell you how you are blessed you're not just blessed because a man of God saw that you marry a rich man. You are blessed because the gift of God's word has been given unto you. And the Holy Spirit. The word of God has not gained supremacy in the life of God. How many of us tonight can look at yourself and in all sincerity say, I'm living by the word. If you are living by the word, you will pack out of that guy's house. Because the Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That you are in his house, you are not married, you are sitting comfortably, you are violating the word. Don't think you will get the same result. See, people, let me tell you, the mercy of God does not override his justice. Hallelujah. You can't be smoking and drinking, roaming around and giving God 10 minutes, and there is somebody laboring in the spirit. You think you will get the same result? No, sir. Straight to the point. Let me just tell you. It won't happen that way. Hallelujah. There are some of you in relationships with an unbeliever. This guy does not love God. What does the Bible say? He said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He said, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? You know it, but it has not become a working knowledge. You have not submitted to the influence of that word. Are you listening to me? It is the word that you know. He said, ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. When you grow in character, when you grow in grace, the Bible says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge it takes knowledge for grace to be multiplied and the more your knowledge the more your peace he said grace and peace shalom be multiplied unto you the supremacy of god's word the second thing i want to touch on quickly and then we'll pray is the renewal of the mind the principle of renewal please write it when the lord asked me to share this i was very excited because somebody needs to hear it Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Who is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of Lords. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise it says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at me. Look at me. Those of you in business and entrepreneurial things, those of you who are called into that area and have read business books, there is the fundamental law. In fact, in ancient times, they hid this law from people and they call it the law of attraction. Hallelujah. This is a business law. It really does not apply to us in that context, but... I, I'm just saying that to teach you something. Some of the wealthiest people in the world believe that it is this singular law that has brought them this. The law of attraction. Praise the Lord. And the law of attraction says that every man is a living magnet. That you attract to your life the things that are consistent with your most dominant thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen. Very powerful. So every time, 
a nation wanted to conquer another nation, what happened? They kept creating through the media the things that will make them think failure and defeat. When they find out that they've taught failure so much, the army will go and conquer them. It worked like magic. This was the principle Adolf Hitler used to conquer. This was a principle that the Roman Empire used. I've done an extensive research on it. The law of attraction. But the, the, the danger of the law of attraction is they do not give credit to God. They give credit to the earth. They believe that the earth is a living entity and it can read people's thoughts. That there are magnetic waves that leave you through your thoughts and it has an attracting power. Science students, this is what Isaac Newton tried to study that he called the universal law of gravitation. Remember? That's what he was trying. He was trying to show the union between two different bodies. The earth and any other body. That there is an attraction between them. So people called it the law of attraction. So that means, according to them, that everything, this is what gave birth to this principle of visualizing. You see that? They say visualize. Do this and that. You know, visualize. Um, see yourself successful. See yourself great. See yourself this and that and that and that. That's why the rich people have certain ideologies. Let me tell you where they took it from. That's why I took you to that scripture. Proverbs 23. Hallelujah. It says, for as he what? God equates a man's thoughts with his life. Are you seeing it there? He says, for as he thinks, where? That is how he will become. I'm teaching you a powerful principle. Ah, so my thoughts. Run with me, Genesis 11. Let's look at it quickly. We are going to pray. I want to show you how powerful this principle are. That, that your most dominant thoughts have already started living before they manifest. Genesis 11. Verse 2. Let's just start from verse 2. And it came to pass, this was the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Listen please. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks for stone and they had asal for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. Listen, Nimrod was creating an imagination in them. He was telling them, This is what we are going to do. Let's occupy ourselves with these thoughts. Are you listening to me? I want to show you something powerful about the renewal of the mind. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down. Listen. So, this was their imagination. Is that true? The Bible says the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Stop. Had they built it? Look at what God is saying. Is it in your Bible? He says, let us see what the men had. They are finished building it. This is from God's perspective. Look at it now. Is it not on the stage? They said, let us start. The Bible says God came to look and said, these guys have finished this thing. As a man thinketh in his heart. This is a powerful principle. Listen, if, if you catch this, you will change your life and destiny. It says, let us see what the sons of men had built. Ha! Question. They've not started. This was the board meeting to discuss. But what did God see in the realm of the spirit? This is what the business people call the law of attraction. That your thoughts are living to a point when it crystallizes. Not even the devil can stop it. Let's finish up. Hmm. And the Lord said, listen. Indeed, the people are one and they have all one language. Listen, he said, and this is what they begin to do. Ah, uh -uh, stop. I thought he said they have already built it. Is that true? Follow me, help me now, Koinonia. Now he's saying, this is what they begin to do. Ah, uh -uh. He just saw from the realm of the spirit that they are finished, but they were about to start it in the physical. 
He says, now nothing that they have proposed to do will what? Was Satan mentioned in this equation? Even God testified. He said, if we don't stop these people, they will do it. How did God stop it? Seven. Verse seven. Come now. This is God. Oh, let us go there and confuse their language. This was God said, Look, the only remedy is to break this unity, give them divided languages, divided thoughts. So it is a language that creates thoughts. Are you following me now? I'm trying to establish something. Help me, believers. God did not say, Let's go and change their mind. He said, Let's just change their language. When their language changes, their minds will change, and this building will crumble from the spirit show you a mystery you will live an unbeatable life let us change their language hmm. romans 12 i'm excited may somebody catch something tonight oh god god wants you to change your situation may somebody catch something tonight Verse 1. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, listen. When it comes to renewal, Paul is beseeching brethren by them. He said, This is too important. I have to beg you that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. He says, Do not be patterned. The word world here is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern. That comes with this age. The thinking pattern. It says do not be conformed. To the thing. That means there is a thought process. That this world brings. And if you stay like that. You will never be successful. Are you listening to me? You see the reason why many people are failures. Before you are born. There is a system that has been organized. And the media is helping it. You don't know. Listen. Listen. One day I'm going to teach you something called the conspiracy of the rich. And you will see how a lot of people and our media is keeping us where we are. You see how the message of poverty helps you to attract all this nonsense to your life. We think it is a good teaching. The Bible says, as a man thinking. So the Bible says, since your thought is the same, words are what crystallize into your thoughts. Is that correct? For time's sake, we, not, we may not read it, but let me, let me just quote it quickly. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now faith, verse 1 to 3 actually, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, he said that for by it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says, Through faith we understand. Through faith. That the world, okay, we have it here. Listen, the world was framed by what? Okay, so we see the word here. But how did it happen? So that the things which were not seen, there was something in the mind of God. I'll never be a failure in life. Never, never, never. See, don't just get emotional about this. found my place i did a teaching years ago called the law of atmosphere i create only the atmosphere that allows the things of heaven to find expression so you are dropping blue films in your house you are dropping cigarettes and wondering why demons are, are oppressing you are you seeing that many of us laugh you think it's nice you don't find me using vulgar words Oh, it's not for people like us. We are... No, 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 no. I'm guarding my heart. That's the next scripture. Quickly. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Say, guard your heart with all diligence. Seeing then that your heart is such a vital point in your destiny. The Bible says for us, 
One to read. Read it. It's projected. One to read. We're going to pray. Keep your heart. Listen. The word there is create a garrison around it. The way you fence it. Create a garrison. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come and pollute your heart with nonsense. That's how they are killing your life. When you come to my place, there is a protocol. You don't speak anyhow. I will walk you out. Hallelujah. You see why the Bible says, Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. What does it mean to consider? Brood on it. Think about it. Many of us are experts at thinking about yesterday. Oh, if only I did this. And they warned me. Now that it has happened, come. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press on towards the mark of the high calling. Everybody say the renewal of the mind. So I take the word of God, which is an ideology, and I begin to change my mindset. Everybody say, change my mindset. Yes, yes, yes. That's what begins to happen to you. So they gave birth to you in a house. There's, it, was, it was just firewood that they were gathering. You've been carrying that mindset. Suddenly you begin to find in God's word that there is a greater life. There is a better place for you in Christ. Your mind begins to wrestle it. People tell you you are good for nothing. Then you keep finding another testimony. But whose report will you believe? I choose to take the word of God. The entrance of thy word giveth light. The entrance, not the reading. The entrance, the entrance, not the reading. And understanding unto the simple. Day and night I meditate on what the Bible has said about me. And I believe it. I'm above principalities and powers. I am convinced about this. I am above. I am above. Completely above. I am blessed. I am prosperous. My heart is already totally committed to God. There is no backsliding. It's not part of the testimony of my life. It won't happen. No. I walk circumspectly. I walk by the wisdom of the spirit. Am I challenging somebody? Epignosis. The walking applicable knowledge of the truth. That you can apply in your life. And you receive results. What situation are you in right now? Do you know that if you take the word of God, you can create a glorious destiny? Many of you are waiting for Nigeria to change your destiny. Let me tell you ahead of time, there is a root shock waiting. We are the ones who are coming to change them. Lift up your Bible if you have one. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I am convinced that it is not a lie. That it is truth. It is able to give me a new mindset. A new ideology. A new thought life that will translate into a glorious destiny. I declare that I believe nothing that is not consistent with the word. I obey nothing that is not consistent with the word. Say I live the word. I talk the word. I believe the word. I act the word. I think the word. When this becomes your life, he said they are life to those who find them. I'll never break down and just run and you'll not come and see me on Friday. You say, why? I say, ah, there's something wrong. No. See, the word has become my new eyes. I have put the word in my eyes. It has, I am blind to any other thing that is not the word. Can you see the solution, not the sickness? Can you see the breakthrough, not the limitation? Do you see yourself rising? Listen, this is powerful. It's the principle of renewal. Sister, do you see yourself marrying? 
Or you are just sitting down and camping around your dream and saying in the dream, I saw a wedding, my husband was there, I was not there. Change it! Amazing the things we allow to govern our lives. Casting down every yetzah, every imagination. I cast them down. Because if I don't cast them down, they will become my reality. I refuse. I am not poor. I may have taken Gary. I refuse to meditate upon that. I'm well favored. This is what the constitution of the kingdom tells me. I'm above only. It says my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. I don't care even if my life is nose diving. As far as I'm concerned, I'm shining brighter. I have the spirit of faith. There's no unfruitfulness in my life. There's no barrenness in my life. I have the spirit of faith. I'm convinced about its reality. I remain anointed forever. No devil, no Jezebel can take it down. It came by revelation. It is sustained by revelation. Hallelujah. Koinonia keeps moving from glory to glory. Because the Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever. Epignosis. If you find yourself doubting the word of God at any point, you truly did not believe it. Are you listening to me? That's the proof. There are many people that only believe God's word based on the result it shows. If it does not seem to show any result, you start looking for alternatives. It means you did not believe it. Look at me. When a woman fails to give birth, does she run to go and cross check if she's a man? Why? She's settled that there is something wrong. But to ask whether she's a woman or not is not an issue. Hallelujah. When a man is important, does he run to the hospital and say, Doctor, verify, paradventure. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. Thank God I don't need another man's confession to build my life. It's entirely up to me and God. So this excludes my enemies out of the equation of my success. I'm happy about this. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He said, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray in one minute. Come on, pray in tongues in one minute. Whose report will you believe? If thy eye be single, thy body will be full of light. If thy eye be single, as a man thinketh in his heart, so will his reality become. Come on, pray in one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Can I tell you something? The believer is a mystery to creation. The believer is a mystery. If you don't believe this, you will die and watch others rise and it will not be God's fault. This is why you are hearing it. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Lord, I submit my life to the authority of your word listen some of you tonight may god break that stubborn heart that will not bend to the word some of you as as small as you are you are so stubborn you won't bend to the word you know what the bible says and there is grace already released to you take advantage of it stay with the word build yourself upon the word Stay 
with the world. Run away from anything that is not of God. It, anything that is not of God is reprogramming your mind to failure. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I submit to your word. I submit to your word. Let him that steals, steal no more. I live by your values uncompromising by your values your word created the heavens and the earth I'm giving you a key that will make you blessed that will make you powerful that will give you grace for generational impact heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away my word shall not fail cry unto god cry unto god your word governs my life your word governs my conversations i submit I submit. I submit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. The Bible says, As a man thinketh, what have you been allowing? What words have you been allowing to shape your mind? You listen to all kinds of corrupt and ungodly music. The problem is, they are mind builders. They control your thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen, make a determination today that all the gates into your heart, your eyes, your ears, that you are going to culture them to make sure they only receive things that will minister life. It's a decision. It's a resolve. People will misunderstand you. But they can't stop your greatness. Hallelujah. Don't listen to any kind of thing. Don't take yourself to places that will cause you to begin to think evil. Take the word of God. Take the word of God like a drug. When you are sick, they tell you take two in the morning. Two in the take it like that. You are going to pray right now. Listen. The Bible says, casting down every imagination. You are going to speak against anything that has informed your thoughts. You know mindsets you have that are not consistent. You are going to challenge them right now with the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I refuse. To be a failure. I'm not a non-entity. No. No. I'm relevant in God's program. The grace of God is at work in my life. I can't die of that terminal disease. I can't die with that genotype. No. Lift your voice and pray. I don't believe that fibroid is a false report. I don't believe that tumor, that growth, it will die in my body. It will die in my body. No sickness can thrive in my body. No weakness. I am strong, strong, alive, mentally alert. I refuse the curse of poverty. I am the blessed of the Lord. Empowered to succeed. The wisdom of God is at work in my life. The favor of God is at work in my life. I refuse any report that is not of God. I refuse it. I challenge it. I challenge it. I challenge it. Reports from the media. Report from my past failures. I challenge it. Make sure you are praying. 
I'm the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I prosper. I'm growing in revelation. Growing in insight. Growing in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bear yourselves into to hold somebody. Just two minutes we are going to pray. Make it three. Make it three please. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray. Speak the word of faith into that person's life. Every truth you know that can set men free about their life, their finances, go ahead and prophesy it. Speak it. Shake it to Kabariata. The blessed of the Lord. The blessed of the Lord. Anointed to excel. You won't die young. All the numbers of your days you will fulfill. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Your path is as a shining light. Shines brighter, brighter, brighter. You are renewed in knowledge. You have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of he that has created him. Tell the person, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you with wisdom. I bless you with favor. I bless you. Grace be multiplied to you tonight. I bless you. Let your hands be strong. Let share vanish from your life. Your God is not dead. Your God is not dead. Your God is not dead. Your God is alive. But I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Take your eyes off the limits. Take your eyes off the challenges. Take your eyes off the failure. I'm blessed. I think greatness. I think favor. I think intimacy. I think about God, His ways, His life. His word is my guarantee. His word is my guarantee. God cannot lie. 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 Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Tell them in the name of Jesus. I'm anointed. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The grace of God is at work in my life. My words carry power. My mind is renewed by the word of God. My path is as a just, the path of the just. Shining brighter and brighter. There's no failure in my life. I refuse setback. I have authority over devils, over sickness, over failure. I'm not weak. I'm not beggarly. I'm the strong. We have not finished. I'm only thinking of what to tell you. Let's continue. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointing that strengthens me. I'm above only, not beneath. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up. The favor of God is upon my life. The glory of God is upon my life. I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with death. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Believe the word of God. Contend for light that you can apply and you will end darkness forever. 
you're worshiping with us tonight for the first time i'll pray for you shortly but let me just do two things please keep standing hallelujah now all the students from dark if you are from dark please come out quickly all the students from dark i understand they're writing their exams quickly please come and celebrate them as they come quickly all the students from dark please save save time save time do it quickly god bless you thank you come and line up here quickly i want to pray for you and bless you hallelujah i first and foremost want to tell you that we appreciate you hallelujah we appreciate every one of you coming from dark we celebrate you thank you so much for your contributions to make the work of god here great i love you thank you so much hallelujah and we apologize i want to use this opportunity to apologize to every other institution that is not abu hallelujah because it looks like okay we're just focusing when we talk about students it's just abu no our hearts are with everybody are you listening to me all the polytechnics all the secondary schools all the institutions our hearts are with you praise god and all the people who are working in various places and please let us know when you need prayers or you have any special uh, program or activity and we'll pray for you hallelujah dark people you cannot but excel are you listening to me the spirit of excellence is upon you i don't care what your assessments have been praise the lord lift your hands all of you as i pray for you i bless you in the name of jesus go and succeed go and conquer smash records do something that has not been done the life and the spirit of god is upon you and ellie who said there is a spirit in you and the inspiration of the almighty makes you of understanding you are of quick understanding even better than your teachers for you have an unction from the holy one and that teaches you all things in the name of the lord jesus you are well favored you will not be victims of exam malpractice in the name of jesus your scripts will not be missing for those of you who need the mercy of god that mercy speaks for you in the name of the lord jesus we bless you you will excel those of you who are in your final year we graduate you in the name of jesus we decree and declare that you're walking in glory god bless you take our love to all your colleagues and our blessings in jesus name celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah now there are some of us here who have not made a decision for jesus christ if not giving your heart to the lord and while you heard me speak the holy ghost began to tell you look this is you must come to the end of yourself and pledge your allegiance to the lord right now i'm going to invite you or you've given your heart to the lord but you found yourself derailing i want you to know that this is home for you you can have a new beginning hallelujah as we begin to celebrate you please whether you've made a decision for jesus before or this is your first time don't be ashamed come out and we will lead you to jesus christ hallelujah begin to come now thank you jesus thank you jesus you've never made a true decision don't be ashamed thank you my brother hallelujah hallelujah celebrate celebrate all of the people if god is speaking to you make sure you don't sit back there i believe there are people that god is speaking to them hallelujah don't remain on your seat very quickly we're out of time hallelujah praise the lord now in the same vein if this is your first time of worshiping with us please leave your seat quickly and come out please quickly save our time quickly just come and line up here quickly god bless you thank you for coming koinonia celebrate them as they come thank you my sister thank you my brother please quickly 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 don't be sluggish god bless you hallelujah thank you for coming this is koinonia how many of you were blessed tonight you will never be the same in the name of jesus I want to pray for you that the blessings of god will rest with you father stretch your hands saints of god and bless them we decree and declare and we speak into your life you are blessed in the name of jesus christ we bless you with a hunger for spiritual things let the appetite for anything that is not god leave you we command that your life will be reordered right now you will have new priorities that are consistent with the things of the spirit in the name of jesus we pray that there will be grace for prayer grace for the word 
grace for obedience. Let the word of God come alive in your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. May the Lord bless and increase you. Now I want you to just follow the ushers. They'll have your details and you'll be back to your seat. Please celebrate them. Koinonia. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.